Hello everyone, Josh here with Texas Games, bringing you all another Awakened Cast era video. So it is very early in the morning for me at the recording of this video. We just got the patch notes for 1-6-2022, so this will be our first patch notes of the new year. Now, it being very, very close to global launch, and with the fact that it is a new year, and this is our first patch notes of the new year, I was expecting maybe they do something decent. I'm not expecting the whole world or any crazy, crazy changes, at least yet, but I was hoping to continue improving the game with a very decent patch note alongside the new hero that was expected to drop, which we now have the information for. What I did not expect is for them to just completely say, you know what, if you're free to play, we do not care. Go to hell. Go to hell if you're free to play. We only want whales in this game. They basically said that with this latest patch notes. Now, you can consider this a rant video. I really don't care. You can try to defend this company. I really don't care. There's no defending what they did in today's patch notes. Now, I know a lot of you out there are really seeing kind of how they've been mistreating a lot of the player base, what they've been doing to free to plays where they just keep, you know, just taking things away, but then giving us one little thing to try and keep you happy. That's worked for the past couple months. But now what they've done with this latest patch notes is just unexcusable. They're really definitely, I should say not really, they are definitely trying to cross the line now. So... If you are an ace apologist and you just cannot take your blinders off for a moment and see what's really happening, hopefully this patch note enlightens you because my goodness. So we're going to go into it. Now, I've been trying to um, be very, I guess you could say, patient as much as I can. Of course, I've been playing this game for a long, long time through various betas. So I've already kind of seen all these tactics before. I already know how they do this. Um, but I was just hoping. I was hoping. And hope is a very dangerous word. Okay, because it has some level of expectation to it. And unfortunately, this game is just, you just should not have expectations. And I, I'm really getting sick and tired of people saying, well, this game's better than Raid. I really don't care. It just because it's better than arguably one of the worst games on the planet because of how Plarium treats their player base doesn't give this game a pass. We wanted this game to be an alternative to Raid. We wanted it to be better than Raid, but we also wanted it to be better than a lot of other games on the market. We needed a reason to play this game, enjoy this game, and really want to invest into this game, not only as a free-to-play, but even as a paid player. So let's go through this, this patch note, and then you guys and gals can let me know what you think about this in the comment section below, but when you think things can get... I'm sorry, when you think things cannot get any worse, they sure know how to surprise you. So here we go. We have fixed the currently existing issues and prepared a compensation gift as their way of expressing our gratitude for your patience. Thank you for 100 gems. That's not even a single summon. Uh, still not doing the 150. I don't know why. Whatever. If you still encounter an issue uh, listed below, please restart the game to apply the updates. So the patch notes. Festival. The Winter Festival event has ended successfully and the Winter Festival shop will open until January 12th. New Hero. Brand new hero, Brand the Brilliant, comes on stage. Web activity, bounty of Brand the Brilliant starts. Now, basically, we have like a little seven-day uh, login, a reward event going on where you just log in, you claim a little reward. I think you get like three summons or so out of that for the entirety of the seven days. It's nothing big. The new Brand hero, we will do a full review breakdown of. He is a light legendary, so there you go. He's only going to be available to the top 1% of the player base. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh he's broken and we will get to that in our hero review video which should be coming out after this i'm gonna try and keep this like i said you know as calm and collective as possible but boy oh boy did they uh did they really try to uh en enrage some of the player base at least in this patch so system optimize the account reset function guild leader needs to transfer their position reset account uh, arena matching reduce the strength of opponents match from tier bronze to silver uh, arena added point protection function when attacked an arena the drop of points won't reset and drop of ranks hero pass when the hero pass is purchased and if the remaining days are less than three days a remainder i'm sorry a reminder message will be shown to the players uh, multi-battle now the status information of multi-battle settings will be saved so all that stuff none of that stuff is bad for the most part it's all just okay little changes here and there sure we can consider that an improvement maybe you want to stretch it a little bit? Yeah, I guess you could say so. But here's where it starts getting a little bit crazy. 
Now, not all of it is bad, but there's some really, really questionable decisions at the very least, some head scratchers, and then some things that are just outright why. You ask the question, why? All stats uh, are for max ability level. So, Avera, ultimate ability, ultimatum, damage range increases from 100% to 200% to 150% now to 200%. So, she got a little buff there. Her min max are a little bit higher on that. A trait, Bone Slicer, damage range increases from 30% to 60% to now 40% to 60%. Effect adjustment after ascension, gunfire applies defense down to targets for two turns. So she got a nice little buff there. If you're an Avera user, congratulations. Desmond. Now this buff is very laughable. We just did a video talking about how Desmond needed a lot of different buffs to his kit to make him worthwhile, especially in comparison to the Poison team or a Poison unit in particular. Ultimate ability, play emissary. The probability of infection has been increased from 60% to 100%. It's okay. He's going to basically infect all the time now. And the health loss per turn under play emissary has been reduced from 10%, 20 and 30% to now 5, 10, and 15. The problem is you still didn't fix the issue. He's still slow and he still does no damage. His plague is still being scaled to current remaining HP instead of max HP like poison. So he still has essentially the same problem. Okay, terrible, terrible buff. Go back to the drawing board, maybe next time. Elson, basic ability slash ability, uh, special ability sneak attack. The probability of applying defense down increased from 30% to 50%. I honestly didn't feel like Elson needed any increase on his opportunity to do defense downs. I felt like he was already doing consistent defense downs, but okay, sure. So now he's just going to do defense down even more than he already was. So I guess. Celine, ultimate ability, snowstorm, CD reduced from four turns to three. That's great. She has a three turn cooldown now. How, here's the problem though with Celine. She still hits like a pillow cushion. She has no DPS that is going to be worth anything, especially if you're trying to use her as an Ash Magisteria substitute for any other water DPS. It's not going to work. She does no damage. She needs more in her kit DPS wise. Maybe make her. Um, give her like an, a high A grade attack instead of her B attack stat. Something. Do anything you can to at least increase the DPS of her. Maybe change her trait to where it scales to uh, attack percentage like plus 10, plus 20%. Like a Connor, for example. Instead of that stupid pointless shield that she gets. Anything like that would have been far better than just reducing her cooldown. Because that does nothing for her. She still hits like a wet blanket. <laughs> Freya. Uh, basic ability, lunge, the chance of applying speed down increased from 50 to 80%. I mean, okay, sure, 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 sure. Uh, the only, the issue I have with speed downs is you really kind of need to be faster than the enemy. Um, because the whole point of speed down is so they go after the rest of your team. So it's like kind of like an issue that uh, Hydrissi has with, with her speed down as well. It's like, what's the point of having to speed down if you're so slow? So... I don't really know if you're going to be using Freya as a speed down unit per se. Probably not. She probably could receive different buffs than this. But okay. Okay. Sure. We'll let that one slide. Special ability foil. Added that applying bleeding. <clears throat> sorry. Added that applying bleeding to the target for two turns. So lead team is dead. If you didn't know, uh, it was a pretty decent team in CBT4. And I mean decent. I don't mean great. It was decent. It was a very decent team. Still not quite as good as Poison, but it was getting there as a nice dot team. It is completely dead right now in soft launch because two of the bigger bleed units are no longer really in the bleed team anymore. One of those, of course, is Avera because they completely changed her kit. And then the other one would be Mary and Shadowblood. So, yeah, bleed right now is just kind of sitting on an island alone uh, with just Scarlet and she's going to be by herself for, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future until we get some better bleed units. So... That, that's kind of whatever. Now, Raven, special ability, Dark Fog, CD is reduced from four to, uh, to uh, from, sorry, from four turns to three. That's nice. Uh, she's a unit that I've been wanting to build up for a long, long time because I feel like you could do comparable damage to maybe Abaddon, if not even more so because the way her ultimate was developed, uh, was designed and even more so now that they've increased it from 120 to 150 plus the 50% increase per additional debuff, which is insane. So, you know, she's still one of those units I'd still love to try out. Maybe in the future. I don't know. But yeah, she got a nice little buff there, I guess. So good good for her. 
advanced trait Sinbreaker increases the damage output from 20% to 30% for enemies with positive effects. That's pretty good because Vance is already a very underrated, very strong unit. And now he's going to hit even harder. He can actually output some crazy damage if you are taking on a lot of enemies that do a lot of positive effects. So that's a nice little buff for him, I suppose. He also got a special ability, Inquisition. Damage increased from 100 to 150. And ultimate ability, Demon Sword Devour. Damage increases from 200 to 200. So he got a nice buff. So for whatever reason, they decided to give Vance a lot of love. Um, now he's going to be even more incredible. He might even be one of the better targets now to be used in Gemini, which I feel like he was already good for Gemini, but now he's like, that might be a go-to option for Gemini, but we'll see. Okay, basic ability, uh, wind, wild axes. This is for, who is this for? This is for Bran, regular Bran, I believe. The taunt probability is reduced from 100% to 50, so they just lowered his taunting because his taunting can be quite annoying on the defensive tank team, especially in PvP. And damage increases from 50 to 80. Okay, he does. He still doesn't really hit hard, so that's that's not bad. Uh, that balances him out a little bit. I can I can improve that one. Ultimate ability: Call of the King, modified from removing two negative effects from all teammates, to removing one negative effect from all team members. So, I I guess um, in PvP that change really isn't going to matter too much because they're being ran alongside Blackhorn anyways for that team. So that really didn't hurt him too much. So really, the big thing here about him is. Now he's not going to always taunt, which is good. That's that's a good, because that tank team was a little bit ridiculous. Okay, Ricard. Okay, now we're getting into some more muddy water here. Trait Unshakable. Before, when taking damage, the damage reduction uh, increases by 5 to 10%, max 3 stacks. So, you could have up to 30% damage reduction. It's kind of funny, because we just did a video... Actually, a few videos here the past week or so talking about some of these units that we're getting ready to talk about now that were changed. Unfortunately, how do you love that? They must be watching my videos saying, oh, Josh thinks that unit's good. Let's go ahead and nerf it because, you know, F us, right? So max three stacks after when taking damage, the damage reduction has increased by 10 to 20%. So they made his damage uh, reduction even better, which is nice. So he's even more tanky than he was before. I like that. That's great. Um, I didn't think that he really needed that buff, to be honest. But after I see what else they do to him, maybe he does. Because basic ability, Mighty Strike, the probability of applying attack down is reduced from 80% to now 50%. So that's nice, you know, because why not? Um, special ability, Brutal Hammer, adjusted from restore 30% of max health to restore 10% of healing every time a negative effect is removed. So that is now super, super, super situational healing on his skill too and if you didn't see my video let me spoil it for you i did a who is better video yesterday and it was between ricard and our boy rogue well rogue just instantly became a better unit even more so than he already was because of these changes because now rogue's skill two healing is vastly superior to now the change that they made to ricard who is now going to have situational healing awesome so they decided that they were going to balance him out by basically saying, okay, we'll make him a bit more tanky, but now we're going to make his healing, you know, kind of whatever. It's going to be super, super situational now. And we're also going to remove, we're also going to remove the ability for him to kind of, you know, have a good, a good chance to increase, I'm sorry, to do an attack down. Now it's down to 50%. So now it's kind of hit or miss. It'll happen or it won't. Uh, okay. And then it's, and then we got Akron here. Get ready, everybody. <laughs> Get your seatbelts on. <laughs> we're going through some really really rough terrain ultimate ability totemic charge the effect of increasing the max health is reduced from a maximum of five stacks which is 75 percent total to a maximum of three freaking stacks why did they do that i don't know and don't tell me oh it's because of pvp no because most pvp fights are over before you even see that get to that point and if it's already gotten to that point anyways you're not killing that team regardless before the lightning kills you in pvp anyways so don't use pvp as a freaking excuse because i already know there's some people like, well maybe it was too broken for people that's bs and you know it this hurts a lot of teams this hurts ricard obviously he was already getting nerfed so that's great this hurts our boy rogue this hurts santis this hurts Rodira. Uh, this hurts. I'm trying to just go through the list of you know other units that people are using day to day now um, for their tie teams that they worked so hard on. Um, all those elites that they were grinding up from pulls to craft Hakron 
it's just it's becoming at this stage of the game what's the point if you're free to play what are you doing wrong why are you making the developers hate you so much because they clearly have a thing against us uh free to play is casual spenders i mean this is even maybe affecting some of the whales out there that weren't really hard trying to just max out their akron for certain things uh, but this hurts free to play is extremely extremely hard because if you don't have Blackhorn, you're using Rodira, and Rodira scales to max HP for healing. And we really, really had to lean on Hakron a lot in our Tide runs. And this is ridiculous. Our other free-to-play options, as we mentioned, was Ricard. It was Rogue. You hurt them a lot. In case you're not aware, this is 30% of max HP that they just reduced um, Hakron from, you know, giving us to our, you know, giving to your team. Because before it was 75%. They just took away two stacks, which is, of course, 15% each, which is 30%. So, it's weird, because now you're getting 45% now instead of 75. That's, that just hurts a lot of things. I just wanted to throw those examples out there specifically, though, because that's kind of what a majority of you are using right now. to Try and do your Tide Runs, you know, trying to get your Curse Set gear. Huh. Well, we got some things for that, too, so, so buckle up, stay tuned. Okay, basic ability for Nathalia, Arcane Surge, damage reduced from 100% to 80%. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep it together, guys, I'm trying. Uh, ultimate ability, Arcane Nova, damage increased from 180 to 200, who cares? We weren't using her for ultimate, that wasn't the point. The point was, we were building a strong team with William, to utilize her skill one and make her very, very good and reliable in Ash Magisteria, especially as a more free to play or at least a budget option because she is an epic. You still have to pull or you still have to pull multiple copies. You can't craft her. So, you know, it's not like you were just gonna grab her anytime you want. You still had to get lucky and get her, or of course spend money to to get copies of her via summoning. <sighs> it doesn't even stop there. William, William's trait that we all know and love, combat prowess. The increase of basic damage of all teammates reduced from 50%, I'm sorry, <clears throat> reduced from the 50 to 80%, which is what it was before, to now 40 to 60. Just to, per put, just to put that into perspective, Nathalia skill 1, which used to be 100% plus William's 80, which made it 180, which was the equivalent of her ultimate, but she also got her buff on her skill 1, so it made it so good with the way her trait and the rest of her kit worked, has now been reduced down to 100%, plus 60 so now her ultimate is out is now going to be doing more than her base base ability so now when you run ash you're going to actually use her ultimate now even with the skill one buffs it's still not going to match the difference because you got now a maximum of 160 from her base ability between her and william compared to her ultimate that's now going to be 200 so you're losing 40 percent there and your um skill one buff just isn't going to match up the difference there so it's just not going to close the gap so that's just one instance of how this has completely screwed a lot of things up for a lot of people so that's great thank you so much if you're free to play f off that's basically what this company is saying this is good times and we're not even global yet who knows what other additional changes they're going to try and squeeze on us before then because um there's there's other youtubes out there that i've seen and they're basically saying hey if they do all these things before global, global players won't know what happened, so who cares? Party har. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Just say you're a shill, okay? Just tell me straight up you're a shill because that's a shill mentality right there. That is ridiculous. And I already know there's going to be some people that are going to defend all these changes. And I just, at that point, those people are just best left to their own devices just to ignore them because they're obviously not going to ever get the hint. They're just not going to care. They're not going to understand. I don't know you know those people are just a lost cause there's no point even trying to go that route but anyways so that's awesome oh, thanks for nerfing william another big target thanks for nerfing hackron thanks for nerfing ricard just what are we doing here what are we doing so santis trait void encroachment in battle the triggered attack effects can no longer trigger the trait okay okay let's just keep going Curse set. Before modification, after attacking, there is a 50% chance to launch a bonus attack using this character's basic ability. Okay, very well balanced, very good. We had to work really hard to get to this gear because, of course, it's in Tide. It used to be an Ash Magisteria, which was much easier to farm. 
um but now it's in tide so we had to definitely make some adjustments we had to build certain types of teams and there was very limited teams that were working especially for stage 11 onwards especially if you're free to play or a casual spender and now they go ahead and do this after modification after attacking there is a 35 percent chance to launch a bonus attack using this character's basic ability this basically just means that divine set is now superior I was going to make a video one of these days talking about the differences between Divine Set and Curse Set and how both of them have their, their pros and cons of, you know, when they could be utilized better over the other. Now it's just no point because now Divine Set is just completely superior because Divine Set is 30% chance to launch a counterattack every time you're hit, which allows you more opportunities now to launch an attack than what your bonus attack was doing with the, uh, with the Curse Set, which is now only 35%. So it has an opportunity to launch once with 5% higher chance than the Divine Set, which can launch multiple times. So Divine Set is just better now. And of course, where are you going to farm Divine Set, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, Gemini. So good luck with that. So you're still kind of going to be screwed and stuck with Curse Set regardless. <sighs> I, I tell you. So they basically are nerfing a lot of things with this. I mean, a lot of things. A lot of units in this game were being utilized very well with Curse Set. Especially if you're running a Curse Set with a Poison Team. If you're running a Curse Set with a unit like Charles, that does a lot of nice true damage on a skill 1. If you're running just skill 1 attackers like Nathalia, for example, or even like an Evelyn, just, you know, as a loose example. But there's a lot of other examples out there where you're going to be utilizing skill 1s with a unit like William. Well, now they've nerfed William and they nerfed the Curse Set okay okay why, why not poison mechanism adjustment adjusted from settlement at the beginning of the turn to settlement at the end of the turn so i'm assuming now poison doesn't trigger at the start of the enemy's turn it now triggers at the end of their turn so that means if there was like certain situations where you knew as soon as an enemy uh, was getting ready to take their turn and you knew they were about to die you weren't going to take any damage now they can still hit you first and then take that damage and possibly die so that's going to be a little bit of a game changer this is going to be something that a lot of people are going to overlook but that's actually pretty big that is really big because there's some situations where you're like okay okay as soon as that enemy takes their turn they're dead and then i'll be able to survive here and now it's like oh god they're gonna hit me i might die before they die now that is a possibility so then you have some miscellaneous bug fixes which i'm not going to really go into but you guys and gals get the idea they went ahead and decided to make a bunch of changes that i'm not sure too many people even asked for in the first place which is usually what they do with this uh with this dev with this developing team i don't know why they do it you ask for things to be changed and then they change something completely different why i don't know obviously it's monetary reasons they want to make more money they're trying to squeeze players um but let me tell you if you just want to make this game for whales, it's not going to last. You need free to play. You need casuals. They're going to make up a majority of your player base. Whales are not going to want to play a game where they're only playing themselves. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be enjoyable. Uh, YouTubers aren't going to play your game because you're not going to have any viewers. If you're not going to have any viewers, you're not going to have any Twitch streamers. You're not going to have any YouTubers. Thus, you're not going to have any free marketing. And this game is not marketing as it is. So, good strategy all of, all of to all who are involved. I'm glad that they make me right every day they do things like this uh, on things that I've said months ago and even when soft launch came out. <laughs> I want them to do better. I want them to improve. I do enjoy the game, but things like this really make me question, is it worth it? And why? I don't want to hear, well, it's a little bit better than Raid. I really don't care about Raid. I don't want this game to be Raid. I don't want this game to be for Raid X players. I want this to be its own game. I want it to be Ace I want it to be a Wigan Chaos era, and I want it to be the best game that it could possibly be, and actually compete in a very, very hard to compete in market, which of course is Gotcha. There's a lot of competition out there with more on the way. Some big games are coming out this year, and if this is what you're going to do, good luck. Um, and I don't want to hear the excuse, well, if they do all these things now and screw all of us soft launch players, global players aren't going to know the difference. What about all the soft launch players that are already playing? YouTubers have already got videos up and all these people that are coming in are going to see and hear about all these changes and be like, nah, bro, peace. Are you kidding me? And why are you punishing players for playing the soft launch? That's kind of a weird backwards logic. But anyways, 
that's gonna be it for me hope you guys all enjoyed don't forget to take notifications join us in the discord in the description below follow me on twitter at excess place like the video if you did let me know what you guys think about these changes in the comment section below they weren't all bad um but most of them were and a lot of the ones that were bad were very very bad so i don't know you let me know what you guys think i just feel like this is just more crippling of free to plays that are already struggling as it is and in casual spenders as well it's like you're investing all this time into these units and then they just go and just completely screw them they screw you uh the, the fact that they actually changed an entire gear set the way they did they nerfed an entire gear set and there's no compensation for any of these changes there's no recall function for units you build up whatever whatever i'll leave you guys with that until next time peace